Let's keep calm and mother on. Mothering is way too important to do alone and way too serious to be serious all the time. My name is Christy Thomas, and I am here shoulder to shoulder with you, mothering and enjoying life together. This is the podcast where you can focus on being mindful and taking a deep breath with me and learning new things so you can pause and savor the amazing life you already have. Now let's go. Today's podcast is with Kim Lauren, who made the film Selfless. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to start talking. I have watched Selfless twice. So I want to let you know that it was really good. And I'm about to watch it a third time soon with my with my kids that I watched it back in. um, I think it was October when you first sent me the link. And then and then I found it on Amazon and I wanted to support you. So I made sure to watch it again and get a copy of it because it's so good, but in a much different vain than the movie um oh the big netflix movie that everyone talked about oh um oh i know which one you mean but i can't think <laughs> like now i'm gonna blink out on it social dilemma. <laughs> social dilemma yes yeah so so your movies dovetail each other well but completely yeah. differently yeah you, you know, we find that because there's another uh, film that we didn't even know it, um, was coming out when we made Selfless. Um, it, it's called Screenagers. And, you know, they set up a lot more of the dilemma things going on. So it's great. You know, there people need to understand, you know, the you know, what's actually going on. But, yeah, Selfless goes in a different direction. You know, we we really were um consumed with stats and everything and thought how can we possibly impact what's going on out there and so my daughter Megan she uh, she and I worked together on this project she's in her 20s and uh, we just said you know what let's push away doom and gloom create a project which offers hope for people to navigate this time we live in because we're here and now what are we going to do about it absolutely (laughs) and there's always a reason for hope and your your film does such a good job of showing hope in this situation. So Kim, before we talk much more, you are a mom of eight, right? (laughs) Yes, I am. Yeah. I don't know if I'd do that again. (laughs) Eight it is. Well, you can't get rid of anybody now. So no, I wouldn't send anybody back. (laughs) Boy, If I knew that teenagers would be so much fun, I would, uh, I might've given it a second thought. No, it's been great. I, I, and you know, being a mom, I think it's, what's prepared me best for the work that I do now. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't trade any of it. Yeah, I was going to say, so your kids, the range of your kids, have they grown up with and without social media or have they always grown up with this pressure? Well, you know, that's an interesting question. I often get at workshops and that. What's it like? Because our oldest is 40 Uh and our youngest is 20. So we've been parenting through a few decades now. And people often ask, you know, what was it like then and now? And when I think about it is um, our oldest ones, whenever they went out of the house, you worried, "Ah, would they try smoking or drinking or, you know, something silly like that and and uh you know you wondered if you'd done your job well and then when it got to be the younger ones I said you know we had to worry more about their safety here under the roof of our own home what they might be doing on a screen alone in their room so you know the the times they've changed and when you think about it you know where they can travel on a screen can uh just be detrimental to them and and it can be very unsafe. So yeah, it, it's changed and you know, the dynamics have changed. They don't have to go out to find mischief. Now they can find it right here. It's, it's here and it's so easy to find. And yeah, um, the conversations my parents had were with me were more about speeding and reckless behaviors with peers and actual yeah, exactly. life events versus being scared of something I was doing on our dial up internet. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, it's funny because, uh, you, like you said, your parents spoke with you. And that's that's a real thing that we're seeing now is families are struggling. They're struggling with communication. We can all be in a room with one another, but we can not really be together because everybody's on their screens. They're, they're someplace else. And uh, that's breaking down communication. And, and secrecy comes out of that, too. You know, kids can be 
or or adults mm-hmm. maybe you know going in different directions and you don't know it's like a silent thing i often say i'm not anti technology i believe it's a a powerful tool when used properly uh and look at we're communicating yeah. this way now so it's all great uh but i do see the internet as at times a snake silently slithering through claiming souls one click at a time and so i think there's good and bad in everything and i think people need to be aware of the true dark side of this and uh, protect their children you know protect their families from from what protect can themselves, be happening protect themselves i think in a lot yeah. of ways adults are unaware of their own modeling right now yeah yeah yeah, it's interesting. We we just released a children's uh, book series uh, based on the messages offered in the film. And uh, there's sort of four key messages, but a fifth one popped up when we were creating the books. Uh, I am here, where are you? And that was, uh, it came to be uh, about parents, four parents. Yeah. Uh, nobody's a bad person, but, you know, often we're so distracted and we don't even know that. And, and these phones and things really come into play. And what does that look like through a child's eyes? There's a scene in the film, if you remember, uh, a young Jesse, he says, I don't know how you all feel, but, you know, I'm sitting at the dinner table yep. and my parents, they're on old fashioned Facebook, he calls it, yes. and my siblings are on YouTube. And I'm here trying to talk to you all and, and nobody's listening. And there's no and one so, there. Yeah. And that, that really resonated. I was like, you know, as parents, none of us are, are doing this intentionally. No, no one wants to cause harm, but do we really understand what we're doing? So, yeah. I'm not sure if we do. So your film, what inspired selfless? Well, you know, we, Meg and I, um, we just were talking about it one day and we just thought, you know, everywhere you go, heads are down, faces are not engaged in one another. And and as a mom, it just made me wonder, where are we leading the next generation with this kind of behavior? And then I thought about it, you know, ultimately, what are we reaching for? We're always reaching for our phones. Like I do it myself, like, oh, you know, what's happening? Am I missing something? Mm-hmm. And most times I'm not. So what, you know, what are we actually reaching for? So that's where we um, we started thinking about it. And then we started re- researching the stats and they're quite grim when you start going that direction. Um, what, what we found was inside of Instagram, we started looking there and, and they put up over 100 million posts in a 24 hour period. Wow. And Snapchat, which is the number one way kids are communicating now, they put up over 3.5 billion in a 24 hour period. And then now you've got TikTok, which is you know, far surpassing those in a very short amount of time. So we started thinking about time. That's a lot of time spent in these apps. And what if kids took, or even adults, Mm -hmm. took a little bit of that time and put it into some positive things? You might actually make a difference in some of the things going on in the world. And everyone we spoke with, even when I do workshops, the number one word I hear is anxiety. Yeah. Anxiety, anxiety. Why is there so much anxiety when we live in a time where we have everything? Yeah. So we have to question or we have to wonder why. And depression is through the roof. And, you know, the, so all that's kind of staggering to think about. But then uh, when I started investigating more, I found that about four out of 10 of our teenage girls, they're uploading sexually explicit material to these places. And then, of course, you flip it around and 98 percent of boys are experiencing yep. their sexual awakening there. It's not the natural flowering that, that no. each person should have. So, you know, those things just were alarming. So that's when, you know, Meg, my daughter and I, we looked at each other and said, how can how can we even impact this? What can we do? Like me, you know, Mm -hmm. I'm nobody. I'm just, I'm just Kim over here. And uh, then it was, you know, it was almost like, you know, something just washed over me. And I thought, but you can make a difference in your, it starts with your family and your community around you and, and just, you know, let a real story from within shine and and connect with others. So um, in full disclosure, I've seen the selfless movie twice, and I'm going to watch it a third time with my own kids because I, with these screen time documentaries um, and, and social media type stories, I really want to make sure that I'm doing the inner work before I talk to my kids about it. So I want to make sure I watch them all the way. Um, yeah. So want everyone to know that. 
that as an adult, this this one is completely safe on the first viewing for my kids. Definitely. Like at eight, there are some things that he would definitely not understand. But the 13 and 14 year olds, like they would understand this. But they don't yeah. have social media. Um Bravo, that's good. Well, idea. we've dabbled in it, but then we've backed off and we had big conversations about why not? Like, why should, why do we want to spend our time there? Like, it started yeah. off as a, an account to share Poe's stuffed animal photos, like just silly stuff. Um, yeah. But then you could tell the difference of like, what yeah. were they looking when they were on there? What else was being seen? And that was a big exactly. concern. Yeah, that's what parents really need to be aware of is, um, you know, we live in a time when our kids have endless freedom at their fingertips, but they are very confined because you hear the anxiety and the depression. Um, And parents are left feeling helpless because they don't know what to do or how to keep up with this. And uh, so we think that we are free on the Internet, but we're actually being fed whatever the powers that be want us to know. And so, um, you know, there's an issue there because uh, you're being brainwashed, so to speak. Yeah. And uh, so we just really need to be aware. and, And I think you having those conversations with your kids, that's excellent. And and when you said watching Selfless um, was helpful for the, the older ones, because we say around 12, 13 is a good age to start with this film, but we have had uh, younger ones uh, view it and, and, you know, do well with it. Yeah, I mean, um, I think that if you're going to introduce a smartphone to your child or some sort of device that connects, that you probably want to consider watching a show like yeah. this. For sure. And, you know, that's what we say about the Internet. When you say if you're choosing to give your uh, young person a smartphone, um, when a child turns 16, we don't just give them the keys to the car and say, (laughs) hey, go have fun. It's no, uh, you know, it's a weapon. It needs to be uh, used properly, responsibly and, you know, the rules and whatnot. for your good and for everyone else's. And, and the internet's the same way, you know, and, and a, a smartphone has everything they need. Yes, and I I did another show with a children's privacy lawyer expert. And she was talking about how when a kid's photo goes viral that the parents or somebody uploads, that, you know, you don't have control over it after that point. And how to talk and scaffold your kids from an early age. Like if you're sharing just photos of your kids on social media, to let them know, to ask them for their consent, to talk about all those things from a really, like five years old, she was saying, like start conversation about what it looks like to share. Yeah, definite responsibility there. And uh, when you said about things going viral, that uh, you, you're aware of Brittany Jesse, who's in the film, who goes into the classroom to speak with the kids and that. And uh, when when she spoke about it, it made me think when when. Um, when you when I was a kid and, and maybe someone was picking on me at school, I could go home at the end of the day and yes. my mom was there or my dad and they could, you know, help build your confidence. You could talk through how best to go back to school and handle that situation. You got a break from go to, it. Yeah. Go to sleep, have a good rest and good breakfast the next morning and head back out to conquer the world. Mm -hmm. And it's not like that. Now kids are connected 24 seven. And like you said, things can go viral and it gets down and dirty. And, and, you know, it it gets so much deeper than that. Uh, When I do workshops, we go more in depth about just the fact that everyone's playing on a surface level. They don't really understand the true feelings, what's truly going on in a person's life. When we went into each one of the classrooms we were in, we always got the uh, students to provide a bio for us that they shared privately. And what I found really interesting was there were so many happy, smiling faces, but there were so many sad stories that they, that they shared with us. So, you know, people put on a face that everything's well, but people, you know, kids aren't getting to know one another and, and just, yeah, the damage that's happening uh, behind that. So what are kids saying when you're talking to them? What do they wish their parents knew? Well, I think, you know, it's a real struggle uh, for kids. You know, 
they're screaming out for for rules and and that that comfort zone because you know they they want to push out the walls and do whatever they want but they do want those rules um you hear the girls say about girls that are doing photos in the bathroom Mm -hmm. um you know and and they're saying because maybe they don't have someone at home that's telling them that that's not the right thing to do so we know that that goes through the ages that people are crying out you know in rebellion and uh you know, so I think they they do want their parents and they do want them involved. There's a girl in one of the scenes, if you remember her, she says, my dad said no dating, no this, no yep. that. And she seemed to really understand. And she really seemed to be more well adjusted than the other girls. And, yeah. you know, it, it it was a good it was a it was good to hear her say that. But um, what we really heard with the kids, too, is. It didn't matter if we were in a school of high risk or privilege. Mm -hmm. The the main message we were hearing was loneliness in the social media age. They weren't happy with their relationships with their friends, their parents, or in the dating world. And the dating world's completely changed. And that's a whole other facet in the film. (laughs) Yes, it is. (laughs) uh, It it really has changed. And, And they're just like trying to define this new way of living and you know kids don't eat girls don't have to worry about fumbling around the back seat of a car to lose a lot they can lose a lot just over sending a picture or something like that one photo can do a lot of damage one bad idea yeah. or one yeah. yeah one ask that doesn't seem so big can yeah yeah, do a lot. Yeah, it's the it's the age old thing of um, you know girls are playing with all that to find love, and you know boys are often after something else. And it's not to pick on the boys in no. any way. I mean it, but it's I see the the standards being you know falling away because you know the boys are in puberty. They're like if I can get away with something, oftentimes that's the road I'm going to go, and and that's not healthy for them. You want them to to push through and, and, and do the right thing. And, and with girls, you know, they're finding their validation through, you know, cleavage shots and more, you know, so it's, uh, we're all getting messed up. We are. And I, I see this with adults though, too. Like this Mm -hmm. is like, we talk about it as it's a kid problem, but it's not, it's really like a big culture problem, but sometimes it's easier to identify the problems when you don't think you're part of the story. Again, what are we reaching for? What are we after? When you do pictures like that or any other kind, there there's nothing there when people are liking them that is you're not being honored for, you know, value, virtue or, you know, helping someone else. And uh, it's this whole thing of narcissism. It's just gone wild and and I think that's part of the whole anxiety thing. You know, mm-hmm. everyone's so wrapped up in themselves. Yep. Their heads are down. You know, they, they don't know what's going on. And, you know, it has them hearts folded up under all of this instead of, you know, arms wide open and looking around and, you know, where can I be helpful and what can I do for someone else? Because people need to understand I'm not the center of the world. And and they're looking for that micro celebrity inside of social media. That phrase was such a good phrase. The yeah. micro celebrity idea that yeah. that is totally what I think I see every time I open up Instagram and I use Instagram. Um, do you use Instagram or social media, Kim? Uh, no, we just have it for our <laughs> film project, which is funny, you know, trying to push it in <laughs> social media. But we don't we don't have that. OK, yeah, we don't do too much there. Yeah, personally, no, I don't. OK, it. that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> um, my, my kids though do like some of my kids do and I've watched them you know navigate uh-huh. all that and uh, I just never promoted it in our home because uh, I felt like if people the people that love you know what you're doing and you know sharing around there so I yeah that was just kind of how we got started and then when I got into this film and this subject I'm like yeah, I feel less useful. <laughs> I totally can see why. So if, is there any advice that you would give a parent as they're listening to this? Maybe they've given a smartphone or they know their kids have these apps. What, well, what would you do? Well, personally, I don't, I wouldn't advise giving a smartphone, you know, be, you know, in the, primary or middle school years. I think it's hard enough in high school. In our um, house, you know, well, the older ones, 
didn't have phones yet. But then as they came into vogue, uh, I always waited till they were driving and graduating and feeling like, okay, this is a good safety tool for them out there. But then what we found with our youngest is uh, I was thought, okay, number eight, I'm going to stick with the rules. And uh, even though the times were a change and, and I ran into my own dilemma there in the fact that she was sneaking, she was now sneaking to keep up with her peers. Um, so, you know, friends were giving her old devices. So she uh -huh. was into it all and I didn't, I wasn't aware at the time. So I thought, okay, what's worse? Am I, you know, that I have a kid who's lying to me now or, you know, that, that I just gave her a phone. So it's definitely, you know, I'm in this with parents, you know, yeah. we, we need to keep the communication open, but you know, so it's, it's tough at this, at this age level, but I say it goes right back to the very beginning, you know, for any young parents out there listening is don't always be taking pictures of every move your child makes because right there you're setting up the I am the center of the universe. They need to understand the world does not revolve around them. And again, nobody's trying to harm their child or yeah. you know, it's, it's all fun. But, you know, my little granddaughter, she she knew when she was very little how to hop up on your lap and start swiping on the screen. And I just, I just found that very odd, you know. So I, I think that you know, you have to really be careful. And then I just say, you know, set rules and don't, don't be afraid to stick by them, you know, and never allow screens alone in the bedroom should always be in a common area. Those are all common sense things. But, um, and then the biggest thing is, uh, you know, living what you're speaking and because our kids are watching everything we're doing. And, you know, it, it's interesting that, uh, you can bring work home or, you know, you hear and you're, oh, I'm going to, because you think you're spending more time with your family, right? right? If you're immersed in your, in your technology and you might be answering a work email, but your child doesn't know that. Correct. So you really have to uh, stick with that. And the other thing is I say, people might not agree, but I think that you should have it very open when they're teens is whatever's in your phone, I should have access to it at any time. And I, it's not that I, I've never been one to go through my kids' stuff, um, but I think that there it should be that we can do that because it's not – someone might say, oh, well, you know, they need to learn to make their own decisions and have privacy, but you can't do that with the Internet. You have to be one step ahead of it. It can suck them down the rabbit hole so quickly. And so and I And nothing say, on the Internet no is policy. private. But if no. there, there's nothing no. that's private on the Internet – no, there isn't. And so, you know, phones should be open and you should be, you know, and, and put them away at a certain time on the counter, not in your bedroom, not in your bedroom. And and there's another thing with that, too, is kids, kids have it. They sleep with their phones. They have them by their <laughs> bedstand, you know, on their headboard. And uh, so it's really they're not getting proper sleep either. They're not getting that restorative sleep. There's notifications going off all the time. And, uh, you know, that's interfering. So they get up the next morning. They've maybe been on their phone way past yep. uh, time. And, but they're also their phones constantly going off and then the 5G and all that infiltrating. So I just say get them out of the bedrooms and uh, they just shouldn't be in there. I, I like that rule. That is a very strong rule that you don't need to sleep with your phone. You can buy an yeah. alarm clock. Yeah. And set, you know, set. Uh, and that was, you know, when we were talking to the neurologist, he said, you know, that's where technology first came into the bedroom when, you know, you can say when the clocks came yeah. in, but you know, that is the lesser of the evils, right? It, you know, it's something that we can manage, but uh, yeah, I just say, don't, you know, don't be afraid to set those rules and, and be very firm. Like there's this amount of time. They often know that it's just like kooky. She all, uh, says too, like I can feel when the Wi-Fi box is on. So they know that their senses mm -hmm. are telling them that something isn't right, but we don't put enough value in that. And, but addiction overplays that. And, you know, they, they can't make any proper choices when their heads are down in that addiction. So we have to help them with that. We have to oversee that. So first of all, we cannot be addicted. That was going to gonna say the first step, it sounds like for all of us is to authentically assess if we have our own self um, yeah. micro celebrity addiction with the phone going on. 
Well, you know, that's what we we first thought when we made selfless is it really is an uncomfortable self-reflection for all of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I throw myself in the ring. I've struggled with my own things with it. So I understand. That's why I say we're all in this together. And completely. I've had parents. Even more so, I think, with this pandemic and different shutdowns in different parts where where you've been forced to be more isolated um, without a social circle, where the internet feels that siren song of like, these are the only people I can see outside of my home. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because, you know, now we're forced to use technology, Mm -hmm. you know, most conferences I'm doing are, you know, Zoom, everything. So that, that connection and human touch is gone. But so we're really having more than ever to find balance with it all. And, and I've, I've had people ask me at screenings, you know, well, it all looks pretty easy. Like we just need to get them outside and, and <laughs> doing this and that. And they said, but how do we do that? And, and I, I really had to think about that because there is no easy, simple solution to it. But nothing and, you know, nothing good in life comes mm, easy. So no. I started thinking about it. This is a conscious choice we have to make every single day. So it's like when you get up, are you going to choose to watch TV all day? Are you going to go out for a walk? Are you going to eat cookies? Are you going to eat carrots? It's something that you have to choose. But when you're in the throes of addiction, you're not making healthy choices. You're not making conscious decisions. Yeah. And that's why with selfless, we found when we decided to, you know, go in through the heart and activate that, because like I said, heads are down. Yeah. And then all of a sudden there's this story we tell and it kind of hits the heart, pulls on the heartstrings and, yep. and you see people look up for a moment and I say, OK, this is perfect. Now we can yep. start a conversation. And um, th- and that's all selfless aims to do is heads up you know, look around you, you know, life's too precious to be missing it. And uh, let's start talking. And as you start talking to your children, your, your family, your yeah. friends, you know, and, and you see a scene in the, the film Raise the Bar, yep. you know, th- those girls were so frustrated with dating and the way things are. And I was sitting there in the background, and I just said, Hey, don't you guys ever get, you know, frustrated with you don't get flowers you don't get a phone call nobody shows up at your front door and there were literal crickets nobody said anything and I said don't you have expectations and then all of a sudden one girl she put up her hand and she said well we do but we're never going to get them not here in the school with these boys and so I said well what about raise the bar and then the conversation started to flow they're like yeah yeah yeah, we I I don't like when this happens and and there is something that we can do about it and so that's what I say there you know we all see the world moving in a certain direction or you know parents say uh you know everyone's concerned and scared right now yeah Yeah, there's a lot of anxiety with the parents and not just the kids vote but you know what speak up, let's say something, let's, let's keep connecting with one another, the more, and you know, you're finding with technology too, it's a self soothing device. So when we get upset about things, or we're frustrated, um, you know, what do we do? We flip open our phone and start looking for ways to feel better. Yeah, and uh, so it's, it's self- just, it's a vicious circle that we need to, to snip. Yes, very, very, very much. And I think it's really interesting to how that it's not unique to any one country, right? Like Europe and Canada, I'm in the United States. I know there are listeners in Australia and other countries all around the world that are going to relate because this is taken over all at the same time. Like we're all connected. This is a pandemic. Yeah. This is a pandemic. It is. For sure. Yeah, it it really is. I mean, we've been uh, various places. We were at a conference in Hamburg, Germany, and uh, we spoke in front of a room full of, you know, very intellectual people, mm-hmm. scientists. And I was a little bit worried, you know, what what would they think? Because I'm not anywhere near as educated <laughs> or as smart as they are. And, you know, they started throwing some studies at us. So, well, you know, this says this and this says that. And, and I just said, you know what, your studies don't mean anything because the experiments happening right now, Gen Z's never known life without iPhone in hand, internet or social network. So nobody knows how this is going to end up, but it's not looking good so far with all the anxiety and the narcissism. So, you know, it really got them thinking. And, and I really brought 
my little idea of why don't we put more value in what we feel? You know, yeah. they have all these ideas, but we feel something isn't right. Our kids feel that. Kooky feels that off the grid. Um, so we need to start listening to that because that was gifted to us for a reason. Yes. And uh, it helps it helps us to navigate. And, you know, I'll, I'll tell you one more little story is we were in Washington, D.C. with the project. And uh, on a down or an off day when we didn't have much going on, we went into the Smithsonian Museum of History. Oh, that's a favorite quite, of mine. <laughs> oh, so, so nice. But I was looking at all the how they have the letters from past presidents on the wall and they're all handwritten so beautifully. And I thought about it and I thought, if not now, pretty soon, our kids are not going to be able to read these letter letters, let alone write them themselves. And I thought, wow, this is taking things to another level because technology is doing everything for us. It's pretty much thinking for us. You know, we're not thinking independently. We're not using the creative process. So I thought, you know, when I speak with educators and that, I think it's really important for our kids to be able to know how to do things themselves first and then incorporate technology later. So I always wanted my kids to be able to write a letter with their own hand, address it, put it in the mailbox. Yep. Hey, if everything crashes, they can still get a hold of me in some way, you know. So, <laughs> so it's like, important. Yeah. So I think I think that's something that, you know, so when when I say do it myself first, engage, you know, your own way of being able to do things. Well, I think when Meg and I made this film, we, we really felt like it was a story placed on our hearts. And I think we were born with this gift inside to be able to tell the story. Nobody can tell a story quite like yourself. And each person is born with that gift within. And I think when we get more in touch with that, um, that's such an important tool kids have because they can go through life and it can help them navigate any situations. When we were in some very high risk schools and lots of sad stories, I thought if, if kids had this activated within, you know, working in the world, it would help them when they're in these sad situations, yeah. you know, to have better foresight, insight to what's going on. So um, I just think it goes so much deeper than just being addicted to your phone. There's so much at stake that we're losing as people. Yeah, we're addicted to other people's feedback and we don't allow the silence to listen to ourselves at all. Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. This has been an amazing conversation. And if people want to find you, Kim, where would they find you? Well, if you go to selflessmovie.com, uh, all the information's there. Uh, there's email. I'm always available for questions. We have education licenses. Uh, we have different community licenses. And there's lots of ways you can just bring it into your home and, and you know, rent or buy it. And uh, we do workshops. And, yeah, it's there's just uh, a lot going on. And I always like to hear from people how – you know, the projects impacting them, because one of the main messages we have in the film is happiness is found helping others. And and that's what, you know, when I said at the beginning that we're, we're taking some of that time that's spent in those apps and, and, you know, engaging it in other activities. Yeah. And, and, you know, with anxiety in that, when you get past yourself, and you step outside and help others, that's a sure cure for that. So um, yeah, I love it that. makes but a yeah, difference to help others. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah, selflessmovie.com and, and everything's there. And I'm easy to get a hold of, as is Megan. Excellent. Well, that is fantastic. I This is going to be on my recommended list of like things that people need to watch for sure. That I've watched it and it, it doesn't leave you feeling like there's no path forward like some yeah. of the other screen time documentaries do right now, where yeah. your movie puts the control into the viewer's hands and it, it ends on such a beautiful moment that you yeah. end the movie not feeling depressed, that you're yeah. part of this moment. That was interesting because that's what um, a woman said. She said, you know, there's you become aware of all these things going on. But she says it's not sad. She says 
I left feeling hopeful. Mm -hmm. And and another thing we often hear people say is, wow, I never expected to feel that. And they leave with a smile on their face because yeah, we, it's all in our hands. You know, we, we need to uh, connect with one another and, uh, yeah, I just say never underestimate the power of the human spirit to do amazing things. Yeah. So how do you, in every episode I have here, Kim, and has a self-care moment and a family connection idea. And I don't know if I gave you a heads up on this. So you can think for a little bit and I can edit all of this out. What do you, what would be a small moment of self-care that you could offer a mom that's listening? Well, I think especially having being a mom of eight kids is um, we're so busy taking care of other people that, you know, our own, you know, needs, they kind of fall by the side. And, you know, eventually your tank is kind of empty. But I think it's really important. You know, it's so cliche, but to, you know, take some time to reflect each day. I, I found that when I start my morning, you know, with devotion or reflection or reading, it just really, I'm fed and nurtured that way. And I have so much more to uh, bring to others around me. And I find that's where my best ideas and my inspiration always finds me. That's fantastic. I love that you start that way. And then yeah. how, how, what was a favorite way to play as a family, either when your kids are young or with your grandkids now? How do you have a family connection idea? Well, you know, it's funny because, um, our oldest, he, we always went for Sunday drives, you know, we, with a big house full of kids, not everybody always wanted you over, but you know, we would always, you know, everybody get a treat and we go for a drive, you know, out in the country. And he, every Sunday he would say right until he went to university. So where are we going today? Every Sunday. So he, he, he really loved that time of connection. And we spent a lot of time in the evenings, um, having little dance shows and things like that. And I just think those are probably our fondest memories is, is just that time spent together. But when I think about it, we didn't have computers then, you know, in the, in the earlier days, we didn't do that as much with our youngest children. And I can see that, um, those memories might be missing for them because we got so busy with life, Um, you know, lessons, hockey games, everything, which is good too. But it's that time of connection and and you don't get that time back. So, um, but I bet you, if you ask any of our kids, they will say it was those, those, you know, evening dance shows and things like that. Everybody, you know, had to do something to outperform the other. And, uh, <laughs> it was lots of laughs and lots of fun. And, and, you know, that's just taking time together. You're, you're making time a priority and, you know, time's just flying by now with, you know, scrolling through yep. things and, uh, watching Netflix all the time or whatever, you know, make, make your own movies, make your own stories happen in your house. Uh, that is a perfect way to end. I love, yeah, yeah we need to make our own stories in our houses. Yeah. 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 And like I said, nobody can tell a story quite like you. So, um, yeah, bring it all to the table and the good, the bad, the happy, the sad, but it all, it's all a beautiful story in the end. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the gift of your story that you shared with the world in a film with your daughter. It is a beautiful story and I'm glad you're here. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. It's really nice to speak with you. I just want to remind you that I am so glad you're here. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Consider the big thoughts. And I want you to know that you are exactly the right mom for your kids. And your kids are exactly the right kids for you. You are an original and amazing. Have a great day.